New year. New fits. Fits happens. Live. All right, welcome back to the show, you guys. When you think of this show, you probably think of, you know, we're the show that does the troop salute. And we do those wacky, what are you kidding me stories of the day. But also occasionally, I read obituaries, specifically animal obituaries, um, you know, about your puppy dogs and your kitty cats because they are our family. And um, it's just really, really sad when, when we lose anything that we love. And I wanted to share this one with you today uh, that one of our listeners shared with me. Her name is Kristen, and Kristen said, My husband turned to look at me and said, I need you to sit down. There wasn't a chair in sight because we were walking to lunch down the beach in Tulum, Mexico, a trip I will never forget. One that I thought we desperately needed considering the 2017 we had, but had I known, had I only known, we never would have went. He's gone, he's gone. Our dog sitter, Yvonne, had called us to tell us that our beloved Parker Jones, our sweet golden retriever that we had loved for over 12 years, had passed away. I stumbled a few steps away from the ocean and I fell to my knees in the sand. I began to wail over and over. We weren't there, we weren't there, I didn't say goodbye. Anyone who's ever loved a dog knows or will know the agony of losing one. Our agony had begun with that phone call and it continued as we begin our mission to get home to our boy. I never will forget that airplane flight. We got home, we pulled into the driveway, and my body went numb. We had made it, but I didn't want to go inside. My legs and feet were heavy as we climbed the steps. And Bart, my husband, opened the door, and there was our other dog, Leroy Brown, there to greet us without his brother. Our dog sitter said he's back in the back bedroom. And I was the first to walk into the dimly lit back bedroom. And there he was, our sweet Parker Jones, laying on his bed covered by the towel that we had used for years to wipe our boy's paws. I knelt down beside him and I grabbed his paw. Bart knelt down by his head and we started to stroke him gently. I've known my husband for 11 years and this was the first time I've ever, ever seen him sob. Heavy, deep sobs. While Bart was out of the room, I leaned over and I whispered into Parker's ear, my apologies. Over and over and over again, I apologized for not being there, for not saying goodbye. And the sadness was overwhelming. By this time, it was almost midnight and the emotional and physical exhaustion of the day had taken its toll. So Leroy and I went upstairs to lay down. At about 3 a.m., I woke and my husband wasn't in the bed. Concerned, I got up and I quietly made my way downstairs. About halfway down the stairs, I could hear the snore that I'd become accustomed to over the years. I figured my husband had fallen asleep on the couch. And as I started to walk down the remainder of the stairs, I glanced to my right, and that's when I saw him. Bart was laying on the floor right next to Parker. He didn't want him to be alone. I stood there, cementing that image in my head. It was heart-wrenching and heartwarming all at the same time. The next day, we walked into the pet crematorium office and sat on the couch in the back room to fill out paperwork and pick his final resting spot. As I scanned the memory boxes and urns, it still didn't seem real. Parker was a red-haired golden that loved to lounge outside in the sun, and I chose a redwood box with an engraving of dogwood flowers. With the paperwork filled out and our choices made, they asked if we'd like to say a final goodbye. Bart pulled the car around so they could remove him from the car and we were sitting on the couch with Leroy between us when they wheeled him in on a cart. We were offered as much time as we needed to say goodbye to our big bear puppy. I placed my head on his and continued to apologize, and I couldn't apologize enough. The drive home was quiet, minus the constant crying, but we pulled into the driveway, we parked the car, and I looked at my husband and said, I don't want to go in. He's not there. We walked into a silent home, a home without Parker, a home that doesn't make sense right now. The first thing I did was walk upstairs and picked up some of his favorite toys to embrace them. Today's the first day in 12 years that I had to go home, walk through my front door, and my sweet Parker won't be there to greet me. He won't slowly get off the couch to grab a toy and bring it to me. Parker Jones is gone, and with him, a piece of my heart. So, Parker, wherever you are, we're thinking about you right now. Sound like an amazing, amazing animal. (laughs) 
Bits Happens, live.